It's exactly what I want. And you also may notice that I will not rename the light, okay? Even if it's uh, lamp and lamp 001, there's no instance saying that it's done on the, uh, on the lights here, okay? Because there's absolutely, like, no need since we got <coughs> a maximum light of, uh, a maximum number of light of uh, eight. So you always should keep, you know, in that, keep that number in mind and don't put too much, too many light in your uh, scene. So I'm going to just simply uh, modify the color here and go for a you know typical red green blue okay and I'm gonna have another test run on my scene to see how it look like I'm going to actually before doing this I'm going to <coughs> move my camera a little bit backward so I can have a better angle on my scene right here and in addition I do you know some other scaling on my texture so what I'm going to do on my model so basically I'm going to scale my texture select everything with A and then push S and then drag and drop you know to create you know like some tiles so we are going to be able to see like how you know these lights affect you know the, the texture like more precisely and I'm going to go back and scripting and object select everything do another update and build and go Okay, so now we can clearly see that I have my four lights uh, orbiting around here <coughs> inside my little test uh, scene. And all of them, you know, have their own, you know, different colors and affect, you know, their own uh, proper area. Uh, in addition with the material, and we can see like here the specularity will, there uh, you go, it's like totally magenta. Okay, so it's taking in consideration the material that I've been assigned, you know, uh, to my box, okay, my room, if you want, uh, here, and that's looking kind of okay, and just for testing, testing purpose, obviously. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add other objects in the scene. And I was mentioning before that <coughs> the lighting calculation is based, you know, like on the normals applied on the object. And now we're going to see like the difference uh, between between them because we can. You know we have some options here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, an icosphere for this one here and I'm going to scale it just a bit and put it more in the middle I'm going to also create a material because uh, if we want the lightning you know to work we at least need to use a material on the surface and what I'm going to do this time I'm going to put push Alt and D because I do want to create okay some instance here and as you can see even inside blender like the preview I am able to see okay uh, the shading that will be applied on uh, these uh, sphere so right now what I'm going to do and I didn't rename them so basically we do have instance here okay so pseudo instancing and I'm going to put them a little bit more near each other, like this. It's going to look better. Select everything and go back to scripting. And now I'm going to export my scene. Oh, and of course, I forgot a little important step. Reset my center. Okay, make sure that all my spheres are centered for the cooling uh, system to work properly. I export and I'm going to run and oh yeah I didn't en enable instancing in this application that is true so okay get rid what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to rename them okay uh, I didn't do like in tutorial like 06 I didn't enable uh, SIO2 bind instance in this one so I'm just <coughs> simply going to rename the object so basically they're going to be all uh, independent object as far as the resource manager is uh, concerned okay and then I'm going to export again and stop backing up please okay and scripting and update and now this time we're going to have all our objects here here we go now I'm going now as you can see it's it's pretty hedgy okay uh, the default normal behavior are solid okay but we can obviously see how 
okay these uh, the lights you know are affecting the sphere like this one when it's coming like green okay and this one with the blue okay uh, this is pretty good so now this time but it's still like edgy so what we're going to do is we're going to select our spheres here and this time we are going to put them smooth okay so we're going to have like a smooth shading that is going to be applied you can okay all the normals are exported independently so depending on what you want to do you might want to have <clears throat> some of the faces that are uh, solid and some of the faces that are uh, smooth okay you choose okay literally we can you know select like a bunch of faces here okay an example and say okay this one I want them to be solid and all the rest will be uh, smooth okay so you really have control on which normals will be smooth and which normals will be <coughs> solid of course depending on what exactly you want to do you might want to change that and now I'm going to have another test run and we're going to be able to see that now it's you know a lot more smooth you know than it was before and we can also see that all of them you know like are affected okay independently so now for this scene we're using the default material okay but if you uh, <coughs> if you have uh, watched the previous tutorial the one that I was showing how you know like to mix uh, material that give okay material that give us a unified color and with vertex color we can do exactly the same thing here okay so I'm gonna go uh, I'm going to select okay my cube is selected and I'm going to go like in vertex paint and I'm gonna go search you know like an extreme color and here basically uh, in this corner okay it's supposed to be uh, it's affected by the white light but here I'm going to override you know that uh, unified color and I'm going to put red in this corner so basically all the rest will be affected to white by default since I do not have okay any vertex color I'm, I go back in uh, solid mode so I can literally see so basically this is the color material that will be used for these faces and for these ones is going to be the red one what I'm doing is when I'm exporting is I'm still taking in consideration okay the specular value that have been set to the, the material on the surface and also like the shininess but the vertex color will override the default unified color that of this material that in this case <coughs> is the default one which is great so depending on what you want to do you can also paint you know like uh, vertex paint uh, every pieces of your mesh with different colors and these are going to be the value that will be used inside the lighting uh, calculation and I'm going to go back in scripting this time select everything and export again just to see uh, how it looked like and now we can really see that even if this corner okay for the rest they are white okay this part here it's white so we can obviously see that the light the lamp okay is taking over like the the, the whole color but in this area here we can see that you that uh, by default, even if our lamp is white, okay, gray, we are going to be able to see that this corner is lit in, uh, is lit in red, which is absolutely normal since we have applied vertex color. So I think this is like pretty flexible, and depending on what exactly you want to do, okay, you might <coughs> want to use a unified material, a unified color, or use a vertex color for or bake vertex color for uh, your mesh in order to have the light and the lighting you know to occur properly.